Hey everyone, Joe Axman here, the mediocre astrologer. Meh, he's okay. Guys, uh, this is the astrology of Michio Kushi. Um, recently, I was doing some research, and by divine providence, I came across on Astro Theme the chart of Michio Kushi, which I had previously had, but not the birth time. And so somebody put it in there with the birth time. And who's Michio Kushi? Some of you might be wondering. Uh, some of you probably know who he is, but probably most of you don't. Michio Kushi is a Japanese teacher, a teacher of macrobiotics. And Michio Kushi, along with Abilene Kushi, are the teacher of many people. Uh, my parents are also among those who studied with the Kushis. My mother, uh, when she was young, um, discovered the Kushis and macrobiotics and actually lived with the Kushis and was taught by Abilene, the Michio Kushi's um, wife. And my father, around the same time, discovered macrobiotics and the Kushis and studied with them. Um, and it was through the Kushis that my parents met. So it really is something that's very near and dear to my life and my whole being. I, in fact, uh, lived at the Cushy house when I graduated high school for a little while, um, maybe like a month or so. Then I went to the Cushy Institute, which is the uh, macrobiotic institute that the Cushy started in Brookline, not in Brookline. They lived in Brookline. They had a kind of a mansion in Brookline in Beckett. The Cushy Institute was in Beckett, Massachusetts. And um, I spent some time there doing work study and whatnot. And that was really interesting. Met a lot of ton of, you know, people I still am in touch with today. Right. Um, oh, but yeah. In any case, uh, Michio Kushi was a brilliant man, genius. And I'll talk more about him, obviously. Um, Japanese, obviously. And his story is that he discovered macrobiotics early on uh, through George Osawa, the founder of macrobiotics. Um, I know it sounds like a Greek word, but it is Japanese in origin. So George Osawa was a, a funny man. Um, brilliant, also a genius, revolutionary, and um, incredibly strong character. Um, he was sick when he was young. I'm just going to tell the brief story of macrobiotics. Um, he was sick when he was young. And his whole family, in fact, was sick and died from tuberculosis, right? Um, and he also had tuberculosis and um, it was very sick. And he discovered through traditional Japanese medicine that he could cure himself. He was very poor and he would take the vegetable scraps from like the dumps from restaurants or whatnot and like cook them up and eat them. And he discovered like... Um, I don't know. I, I think he had another teacher or something like that, but um, he put it, he compiled it all through, you know, far Eastern philosophy and his own understanding. And he revolutionized also the concept of yin and yang. He changed it a bit from its original format to, to make it more um, um, understandable by Western mind. He wanted to modernize it. Um, and so there's a bit of a uh, disagreement disagreement i guess or just like sort of um schism about uh, yin and yang and the correct way to use it he he said that uh yang was contractive yin was expansive versus the chinese original chinese definition which was that um yang was active yin was passive right and so it depends what you define how you define like the the root um definition of what is yang and what is yin because these are abstract concepts right they're completely abstract there's nothing we're just talking about words and definitions and you can change the name of the word you can change the definition and so it's completely mutable right yin and yang is not something that's carved in stone it's it's really about how you understand it so you can have the only th real thing that you need to do is be consistent with your application and understanding of it that's the challenge with yin and yang right so in any case uh, George Asawa, um, actually, so Michio Kushi met George Asawa when he was young. Michio Kushi was profoundly inspired by World War II. 
uh, he was just a young man and he was um, I'm not sure if he was studying in school at that point or not, but um, the the bombs dropped in Japan. And I, I've heard something like, you know, how people like did stupid stuff, like people are like, oh, it never happened. Well, it, something definitely happened, you know, whether it was atomic or not. I mean, some people are like, there's no atomic bombs or whatever. There was massive destruction, massive people, tons of people died. Hold on. Sorry, it just bothers me that it's not focusing properly. Um, and there, Michio tells the story of tra taking a train through, um, it was either Nagasaki or Hiroshima, and seeing the devastation. And he and he was a young man, like 19 or something. And he's like, he and he made a vow to himself. He said, from that, because he's seeing this massive devastation, he was really deeply moved. And he said he wanted to devote his life to peace, to world peace. Um, and then he, through a series of events, he met George Asawa. And George Asawa said, have you ever thought about the importance of food upon the influence of humanity? And he had never thought about it, but then it uh, inspired something in him. And he started to study with George Asawa and learned Yin and Yang. And, you know, Far Eastern, I mean, he was steeped in Japanese culture. So, it's, it's you know, he learned about his own culture, essentially his own, his own uh, traditional Far East understanding. And... Um, Sorry, email distracting me. Um, then George Asawa went to France and Michio went to America with his wife, Aveline. And they started on the East Coast uh, macrobiotics, American macrobiotics. So uh, without further ado, let's look at his chart. So my parents studied, obviously, with Michio and Aveline Cushy. My mother learned macrobiotic cooking directly from Aveline. And, um, you know, I'm not here to debate the merits or, um, you know, uh, faults of macrobiotics. There's certainly a lot of both. Um, there's great, there's great uh, wisdom and, and value in a lot of what macrobiotics has to teach. But no doubt there was a lot of things that needed improving upon and have improved upon, but still more, more, you know, endlessly more, right? <laughs> um, definitely there, it needs to be up to date and, and a lot of people's practices are, are not ideal um but anyway i am grateful extremely grateful to have been brought up with this knowledge because in fact this is the root of my astrological knowledge uh coming from the kushis and osawa um because i learned how to understand archetypes um and um yeah so I'm grateful to the Kushis. Um, I lived with them for a little while, like I said. I I Aveline was like um almost like a grandmother, a surrogate grandmother. I would take her shopping and stuff like that. And um, you know, I'd ask Michio questions about stuff. Anyway, very interesting. Um so he's Pisces rising. So I did not know the rising time before. Currently it's 2 a.m. That's what somebody put in Astro theme. So it's as good as I'm going to get, really. So uh, Pisces rising. And one of the things about Michio, which is extremely obvious here, is that he was psychic. Very, very psychic. Okay. Um, this man could look at somebody and really see things about them that um, were beyond the knowing. And he, his, his ability to not only see things about people, one of the, the strengths of macrobiotics is that uh, Michio especially developed facial diagnosis, right? And he really mapped it out wonderfully, like genius level to where he could look at somebody and he taught other people how to do this, many people, including myself, my parents, um, what they were eating and what their diseases were right what they how to how to look at somebody's face and understand their condition their constitution condition being what they've eaten in recent years constitution what they were born with right their their inherent native strength that they were born with right and so all these things could be seen but Michio was seeing beyond that like into the the spiritual realm of the people and he could say things about them that he couldn't have known otherwise very, very psychic, very, very intellectually brilliant as well. Genius level brilliance. And um, 
he spoke in front of uh, Congress, I think, and was um, uh, inducted into the Smithsonian Institute. Um, there are many wonderful things about macrobiotics, even though I, I, I have harshly criticized it. There are many wonderful things. I, I really do have to say that. So anyway, urine is rising. So similar to me, but this is Pisces, right? Um, so very spiritual, very... Um, Mitya was very passive, right? Um, not that he didn't have a uh, aggressive side, but he had this very expansive kind of quality to him that and that now that I see Pisces rising, I'm like, yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, yeah, brilliant man, quite tall. He smoked his whole life, and this was we'll get to that, but um definitely you the Uranus in Pisces is really te a, a testament to his kind of brilliance and genius and trailblazing quality independence. It's not retrograde. But um, and that's OK. It's not a negative that it's not retrograde. It just shows that um, it's not as rebellious. It's more easygoing. Um, so, yeah. Um, he wrote tons of books as well, by the way. So Jupiter is his ascendant lord and that's an Aquarius in the 12th house. Right. And so uh, ascendant lord in the 12th, um, among many things. I mean, he's a foreigner. So that relates to that. Right. He traveled from Japan to America. He's a foreigner, foreign land, exotic. Um, Jupiter and Aquarius is very, um, Jupiter is a natural teacher. Aquarius is very abstract, ideological, high minded, could be political, social, but he wasn't that involved in politics or social issues. He was aware, very aware of social issues. But of course, his whole his whole inspiration was very social, bringing world peace. And in, in fact, he um he wanted one world government right and and so like you might think oh well, that's terrible right but from his culture from his mindset it wasn't like he's not coming from like this sort of like communist socialist and new nwo perspective which we now have and and obviously you know i don't necessarily agree with it but i can understand where he was coming from if you hear him writing about these kind of things which he wrote he wrote like I don't know, over 70 books, I think, like tremendous. And other people did write for him a lot of times, but he also wrote. Um, in any case, um, he was very socially minded, but it wasn't, um, it was very, ex in an expansive way. He did not get into the nitty gritty of things. He was more just concerned about the overall direction of humanity. And he wanted to bring humanity towards a healthy, holistic natural way of being and so that is very aquarian right and um also you know scientific um in the 12th house spiritual right esoteric um all all these things um it's enhancing the psychic quality of of him as well um and then so jupiter is also square the sun which is interesting because this is ascendant lord. This is his son. These are two major aspects of his personality that are square to each other um, perfectly. Um, Jupiter, in contact with the sun, regardless of the square, is going to expand the ego, right? And make the person very confident, but potentially egotistical. And he was both more confident than egotistical. But you could see that he was like, he at times would talk about himself as being, you know, I don't know. I'm not here to judge him or anything like that, but like this very expansive view of his self, very big, view, you know, like um, in any case, you can do your own research about that. But um, and the square is a bit um, sort of challenging, um, definitely uh, it's going to mm, create some inner tension there because, you know, the two aspects of, of his personality, one's in the 12th, the other's in the third, right? Um, between writing and intellect and more spiritual um, components, these were often wrestling with him because sometimes, you know, they could be at odds, you know, especially if he's trying to lead a group of people, you know, people become overly intellectual, um, and then he would have to correct them and say, look, this is not just about the intellect or food. We also have to include spirituality, right? Um, 
so these two aspects could be at odds at times with him, but um, definitely connected. And Taurus, uh, food, nature, right? Third house, writing, intellect. Mercury and Taurus. By the way, this is Algol. 25, I don't, the fixed stars not here, but um, shown here, but this is conjunct Algol. Interestingly enough, my father born the exact same day. Well, um, my father was born May 16th, but um, almost exactly conjunct this. And then my Mercury is also, you know, 25 Taurus. So um, all conjunct Algol. And Algol is not necessarily all bad. Yes, I have seen um, indications where, where people become crazy, highly aggressive, um, drug addicts, where, where their son is conjunct Algol. But it can also be leaders and um, heads, authorities. There is a destructive element uh, there. Um, you know, obviously, like I just, like I said, Mitra smoked his whole life. He'd never drank, but he smoked cigarettes. And he loved coffee and coffee shops and donuts and pastries and going out to breakfast. And, you know, even though he um, was a, a great proponent of natural foods and he did eat at home, I witnessed it. I was there. Um, he often ate out. Right. And that was like and he traveled like endlessly. Um, so he was also quite destructive. And we could see that here with moon, north node, Pluto, which I'll get to. Um, but you can tie that also to algal influence. Uh, there's a strong um, um, propensity towards destructive behavior with algal. And you have to rise above it, right? You have to defeat the Medusa. That's the mythological association there with algal. That Perseus cuts off Medusa's head through um, the strategy. Um, Pallas Athena gives the, the shield, which is the mirror. And uh, Mercury or Hermes gives the sword, which is discernment right? Uh, being able to say, I want this, not that, you know, I want healthy food, not drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and destructive behavior. Um, so that's the discernment that's necessary for algal. And it's not bad. If you have algal, you just need to be more discerning with your choices. Yes, there is, you're going to be more pulled towards that sort of thing. But, you know, it's such it's a challenge that we all have, and we all face. Um, now let's see. Sun is ruling the sixth cusp in the third. So that's, you know, very good for academics. Um, writing a lot, right? Very prolific writer because sixth house is the thing you do all the time, daily grind, right? Um, it's also kind of square Neptune. And there's basically a T square here with Jupiter, Neptune, Sun. And these are actually all three elements of his own being because Neptune also is co-ruler of, of Pisces, right? The more the more um, etheric, esoteric, energetic ruler. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, and it shows somebody who's struggling within themselves uh, and working very hard to bring these different components together. I mean, Chill was like, he... he definitely pers personified this because he had this incredible intellect, right? Genius level. At the same time, psychic as can be. Um, and, you know, he was great at not just psychic, but like really reading people. And now we can see this opposition, Jupiter opposite Neptune, right? Being able to, I mean, Jupiter opposite Neptune can be, I mean, anything opposite Neptune can be delusional or have, you know, uh, see um fantasy with other people so there is that element but um you know neptune in the its highest expression is is highly highly um intuitive right highly psychic um and so he's combining you know this very practical food based intellectual um knowledge with writing and and speaking communicating he taught he, he gave endless talks all the time, extremely hardworking. I remember I was at the Cushy Institute and he came for a, a lecture and flew in from somewhere, who knows where. And it was late at night and he was falling asleep. He drank coffee all, all day long, by the way. And he was, had his cup of coffee, but he's like lecturing and falling asleep. And, and everyone was like, Micha, wake up, keep teaching us. Instead of like, we should have been just like, 
eat your good bed, you know? Okay, class is over. But um, people wanted to learn. And that's the kind of person he was, like extremely hardworking, right? And so that that's about these squares. Squares really push push a person. And if they don't embody the square, if a person is not like themselves, being hard on themselves, pushing themselves, they're they're gonna meet that square in the outer life, in their, in their, in their, you know, it's gonna they're gonna get hard lesson. They're gonna have to work really hard at something. Um so squares often indicate very hard work. So he was a very hard worker. Um, you know, the three asked the T square within his own own, you know, planets, right? Sun and you know, the two ascendant lords, if you want to put it that way. Um, which is very interesting. But also the, the Jupiter opposite Neptune just on its own, it's sort of like being able to um really read people on a on a deeply psychic intuitive level as well as combining intellect um yeah uh neptune in, in um leo on its own uh definitely indicates somebody who um can perform in front of people because leo is very creative and performance oriented entertainment neptune is the um sort of delusion or fantasy of creativity and and acting uh being in front of the camera so he was you know very adept at being you know playing that role as well right being in front of the you know being on performing in front of people i don't he was in front of the tv on several occasions i i'm, I'm sure I, I can't think of any offhand but many videos of course uh lectures um a leader of a whole of a huge community right um Let's see what else so mercury's also in taurus and taurus also is great for explaining very complex things in very simple terms i also have my mercury in taurus right so he's a great teacher very natural um perfectly suited to um also for Ian and yang right um taurus is very binary it loves you know reducing things to its most um simple forms and Ian and yang being just two Ian or yang you know, a Taurus, somebody who has Mercury in Taurus, Sun in Taurus, any strong planets in Taurus is going to love the simplicity of binary um, uh, reduction. What was it called? Um, there's a word for it. Um, I, it's slipping my mind. Anyway, just the, bi the binary quality of yin and yang, where it's just two. You know, it's not very complex. Is 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 something more yin or is it more yang? Or is it in between, right? Or is it both? Something like that. Very simple, very Taurian. Um, let's see. Venus is ruling the third cusp in the first in and second whole sign house. So um, you know, that's bring the intellect to him, uh, emphasizing his identity, his name, uh, his um, him as a person um you know writing um venus is not in great dignity here but um that's okay uh um this also would indicate sort of his his propensity towards destructive mm, vices smoking coffee all day long and I, coffee in up to a certain amount is healthy like you can have coffee i don't mean to say it's a bad you know bad bad beverage it actually has a lot of health benefits but when you're drinking it all day long it can um deplete minerals cause osteoporosis weaken the kidneys things like that cigarettes as well very very destructive we know that and junk food he loved junk food right um even though he also had a healthy he tried to eat healthy his natural desires were you know, not that healthy. A lot of his, you know, a lot of things that he liked to do. Um, but it indicates writing, you know, third Lord in the first or second, if you want. Um, that's also about speaking. If you're looking at whole sign houses. Um, but in any case, yeah. Um, also, just in general, um, Venus for a man can represent women. And he liked women. He was having sex up until his old age. And um, this is not a judgment again. It's just, it's a well-known thing. It's not a secret. He was having sex with other women, 
but that's also a cultural thing. His wife never, his wife knew about this, obviously. And it was, it was a cultural thing, right? It wasn't like in the West, like, oh, you're a bad person if you cheat. It wasn't really cheating. It was, they had like an open relationship essentially. Um, but it was more, it, he, he was doing more of that than she was. I don't think she was very interested in sleeping around. In any case, um, he does have North Node, Moon, and Pluto in Cancer in the fourth. Uh, Moon's in domicile, but North Node, Moon is not very, that's not a great combination because it leaves a person desiring, like never satisfied because Moon is the, the heart, the satisfaction, what we need to feel fulfilled in life. And uh, North Node is hunger. So the person is left hungry for satisfaction. They're driven. And then Pluto is is quite destructive. So that's even more fueling this kind of uh, algo Venus in Venus and Aries, you know, in the first lord as the first in the first house um, quality where, um, you know, he's turning towards destructive things in order to 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 get by and fuel his constantly his his you know his work ethic was just you know he could do he could counsel all day long and then like into late of the night you know and then not even eat dinner and just you know maybe have like i think he like cookies at night stuff like that you know um incredibly hard working um but destructive at the same time and also that this is a uh, fourth house and cancer and he had uh the Cushy institute and there was more than one Cushy institute the main one was it was like 200 acres or something like that in um beckett massachusetts i i went there i studied there for a while beautiful nature preserve big old house it got run down at the end because there wasn't a lot of money it wasn't very much of a money maker but he had many he had different companies uh mitoku macrobiotics was a natural foods uh company that he started and he started other ones um they were the inspiration believe it or not behind um most of the whole food natural foods movement that started in the 60s they weren't the only ones but they were one of the main ones the kushis specifically and many of their students which were inspired by the kushis they would say oh go you know go start a health food store or go teach or go do this go do that you know like they wanted all their students to 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 take part and start new things they brought um japanese culture to america shiatsu massage japanese massage uh futons which we now have, which a lot of people don't like but that's japanese a lot of people do like i love sleeping on a futon i still sleep on a futon um japanese food um you know chopsticks so they were a lot they were behind a lot of what we see today whole foods was largely inspired by micho and his wife right? Because of the natural food stores, right? My father started, he's seen natural foods along with his brother in the 60s, late 60s, and it still stands today. It was a health food store, one of the original, you know, health food stores in the country and the only original health food store in Philadelphia. In fact, they had health food stores before them, but they were more like GNC nutrition stores. They did not have um, vegetable, organic vegetables and organic, you know, grains, beans, nuts, seeds, and a whole bunch of like all the organic natural food products that we now have, right? They didn't have anything like that. So what we now know of as food stores, large health food stores, largely inspired by Michio and Avalin Kushi and their students, including my parents, right? Um, yeah. And so I forgot what I was going to say. Let's say something else. Um, let's see here. Moon's ruling the fifth, and it's actually on the fifth house cusp, but cancer relates to land. So, like the Kushi Institute, there were there's an um there were other Kushi. There was one in um Amsterdam. Um I, I visited there, and um there was other ones in Europe as well. They they didn't um last very long. He wasn't great with money, I'll just say that. Um let's see here. Um yeah, Mars is in the twelfth and Pisces, so um you know he could have handled his money a lot better than he did um and he made a lot of money he, he could charge like 500 dollars for an hour-long consultation i mean literally people were willing to because he was healing people macrobiotics has an incredible track record of people coming from the standard western diet 
uh, with terminal illness and getting better. Where it doesn't have a stellar record is long term. Um, that's where the diet doesn't seem to be as um, well developed, where people practicing 30, 40 years, um, you know, didn't seem to, they, it sort of got stagnant, you know, like they do well at first and then they just sort of go to sleep and just be like, this is the way it is forever. We're never going to change a fucking thing. We're just going to do the same goddamn thing we always did right from the start. And then they get cancer and die. But life doesn't work like that. Health is not a static thing. You can't just be like, this is the the the, the, the template, which I'm going to follow forever. You do that with anything, you're going to get sick and die. Like, it's not just macrobiotics, right? If you're just that rigid and dogmatic, life is about growth and change, right? So we need to constantly explore, grow, adapt, renew. Uh, right it doesn't just stay the same so that's one of the faults of of the practitioners and the teaching behind macrobiotics that it didn't encourage people to continually grow and expand but it did have an incredible track record in the beginning for for most people like really great and my father also had um you know people uh, you know cure themselves of diseases that the doctors and hospitals um, abandoned. They said, you're going to die. They come to macrobiotics, they get better, right? So it, it, it's it's mixed bag. It's not one or the other. It is both. Macrobiotics has incredible uh, recovery stories. You know, people were uh, recovering from cancer, many of them, many times, right? So people are like, when are we going to have the cure for cancer? Well, we have had the cure for cancer and other other uh you know dietary modalities can have claimed the same it's just that it doesn't get in the mainstream media and if you understand the way the media works it's it's very contrived very controlled things only get in the mainstream media that want to that they want to they decide uh is a good story to expose it's it's complete um completely controlled right it's not the news it's what they want the news to be it's it's Right. So, you know, people talking about when are we going to get the cure for cancer? We've had the cure for cancer for decades. Right. Many decades. Um, yeah, it's not it's not like, a, well, one day we'll discover the cure for cancer. We know the, we know the cure. There's many cures for cancer. Right. It's not a mystery. Believe me, there are so many documented cases, so many, not just one or two, like like probably, you know, hundreds. I don't I can't count them all, but there are many, 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 many documented cases. Um, in any case, and books that have been written about them, like many books. Anyway, um, there have been incredible success stories with macrobiotics. Michio Kushi could charge $500 for a single hour-long consultation, and he did. And he had many companies, and he would he just we, he didn't handle his companies well, and he never made tons of money, as far as I know. Right. Uh, none of his kids. I mean, there was no great fortune when he died or his wife died. Um, but there could have been if he handled himself a lot better, but he didn't. So whatever. Um, he also has Saturn in Cancer in the ninth house. And that's square Neptune. It's basically a grand grand square. Right. I mean, Saturn is opposite. Sun's opposite Saturn, square Neptune, square Jupiter. So that's very interesting. Um, Saturn is ruling the 11th and 12th house. And this is more of a testament to his hard work um, and his leadership ability, but also, you know, um, the he, he was always traveling. That's very ninth house thing, uh, traveling overseas, traveling everywhere, giving lectures and talks and counseling. Um, he was also, he studied and he did have an, uh, you know, a college degree. I can't remember what it was in law or something like that. I don't know. Um, this was before he fully dedicated himself to macrobiotics. Um, but, you know, the Scorpio element is also um, relating to his ability to really penetrate and understand um, the secrets, the, the hidden secrets of, of, of life. And teach them as well, which is a very ninth house thing, you know, the teaching capacity of the ninth house um, and mastery, the authority, um, he himself being a, an authority or, um, you know, in relationship to authority, you know, the opposition is kind of both. It it, it, it blends with, with, with the planet, the, the two planets blend with each other, but it's also seen in relationship with others. 
and um yeah he so he was a leader he was an authority he was um of an extremely large um character personality right um he has south node in capricorn with part of fortune and the conjunct the 11th house and 11th house definitely makes a lot of sense not only for career success but for um the community that he was a leader of capricorn 11th house south node but also part of fortune right and then the north node in cancer which is you know caring for people nurturing people loving people wanting to help people it's also quite destructive with this pluto here right and he did have can he did get cancer at the end of his life colon cancer which he died from his wife also got cancer but if you looked at their life and lifestyle and you looked at the foods that they ate i mean it's it, it's not surprising really i mean he smoked like i said he smoked his whole entire life um till the day he died he never quit um but he was happy like he was always smiling like this guy had an indomitable um attitude like he was just completely happy he never complained about anything um as far as i know right maybe he did complain to some people not 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 publicly um i've seen him teach uh many times right and he was he was funny hilarious and that's jupiter and aquarius right hilarious sense of humor um very jovial very tremendous spirit like i have a lot of admiration respect and and love for michio kushi i mean some people you know i mean with the, this giant t-square he's gonna make some enemies of, and he did because that's just the way it goes with with this kind of thing um but um incredibly powerful character uh the, the part of fortune is trying his son um he's got his grand water shrine with the ascendant um mars is in pisces in the 12th and that's also gonna you know mars is very intuitive when it's you know um in the in water houses in water signs um if you combine the two it's even more so this is in pisces in the 12th definitely can still it's not just about like physicality and aggression and activity it is but um it's also has a, has a very intuitive, um, even psychic quality when it's like deeply immersed in water, right? And so here it is. Um, and that's second, Lord, in the 12th. Um, so speaking, commu communicating, speaking um, about spiritual, psychic, I don't know, esoteric matters right? Spiritual, you know, speaking about spirituality, spiritual knowledge, right? You could say, uh, because knowledge is a resource. Um, and then the ninth house also in the 12th, 10th Lord in the 12th, ascendant Lord in the 12th. So you can see a lot of uh, 12th house activity. Venus is the eighth in the first, and this is not healthy because eighth, eighth Lord um, and third, but eighth, particularly is more destructive talks about death and not being in very good dignity here um that's a very destructive to his body to his being um yeah michio also always dressed in a three-piece suit usually gray um and so that that's also like venus kind of conjuncting the second house widely conjunct the second house cusp but second old sign house right wanting to look good um and he always yeah was very and he's extremely thin right he was um you know kind of lived on coffee and cigarettes which tends to suppress the appetite so he didn't he you know when he was young there was i guess he was indulging in ice cream so he's a little puffy but then he like gave that up and just became really thin and he was kind of tall He's kind of like this stick figure, which a lot of people emulated. A lot of his students, not not it wasn't a good emulation. Like it kind of gave macrobotics a bad look, like looking like a ghost, looking like um lurch from um the Adams family or something like that. 
not a good look. Emaciated, weak, not enough protein. Um, but you know, that's what he wanted. It was his original look, but a lot of people copied him to their detriment. Um, yeah. If we look at the dignities, Saturn is retrograde. Um, but everything else is direct and fast. Right. So that shows a very easygoing character, very smooth, uh, not a lot of resistance. And he didn't like he wasn't full of resistance. He was not like angry or, you know, like going against the world or anything like that. He was very smooth character, uh, smooth operator, really, um, who liked to be very agreeable, very you know, kind of going with the flow. Um, of course, Saturn retrograde is going to create some opposition to the law or authority um and he had that quality right he he kind of did whatever he wanted regardless regardless of you know um the law i guess i don't know authority is what he was supposed to do um yeah let's see i would take a brief look at the draconic chart um so I'm just going to look at the ones that seem to line up with the natal chart. So like Pluto conjunct Uranus in, you know, five degrees from the ascendant. That seems quite relevant, um, very um, powerful, uh, but also quite destructive, obsessive. Yes. Um, uh, very, uh, you know, strategic, controlling, psychological, all these things. Yeah. Uh Moon in Aries. Aries is also very inspirational, right? So we got the Venus in Aries in the first house, but also Moon. And then, you know, Moon Venus certainly loves women, right? Which he did. Um, it also, Moon Venus is, can be very indulgent, which he was. I mean, not like excess, not like excessively eating, but like, you know, the cigarettes, the coffee. He never drank or did any kind of drugs, anything like that. But coffee, cigarettes, donuts, you know, constantly eating out, things like that, loving like women and sensorial type food, like eating cookies late at night, things like that. Right. Um, but Moon also in the first is also very expressive. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. Neptune conjunct Mercury seems quite appropriate for um, spiritual uh teaching right which he did he was he thought about spirituality as well as like intellectuality like he was like i said he mixed very diverse things which um the the squares um uh point to you know squares are like things that don't necessarily get along that well right and when you're talking about like heavily like very intellectual stuff as well as spirituality and food and nature and everything right he talked about everything he wrote like 70 plus books we talked about everything. Um, so then Mars, Mars and Scorpio conjunct Saturn in the ninth uh, seems really interesting. Again, this is part of the Grand Water Shrine. Uh, very powerful. Um, and, and Micho was very sexual, right? Uh, he loved to sleep with women. <laughs> I already said that, but he did. And um, psychic, this is adding, you know, the, the psychic grand water trine. Also Jupiter and Scorpio. So teaching about secrets. It's in the eighth house. Um, he taught many secrets. What can I say? And many secrets he didn't teach. He, he just kept to himself, I'm sure, because he taught he taught that you don't tell. You tell like, I can't remember, like certain, you're only supposed to tell a certain amount of what you know. Like that was his philosophy. You have to keep some things a secret. Right. So he had his secrets and he was definitely, you know, he, he knew how to do things. He was a very powerful man, like uh, very spiritually evolved. Um, uh, Mars, Mars in the ninth points to like very active in travel and education and learning and teaching. Right. And then it's good in, in Scorpio. And then Mars Saturn is very quite, quite aggressive. He was not aggressive at all. But um, I guess on an energetic kind of spiritual level, there was a certain quality that was aggressive, um, at least with himself, you know, 
um, very, very active. You know, he was not the one, he was not one to just sit there and meditate for, for, he did meditate and he, he talked about that, but it wasn't like his main thing. He was much more about activity, um, not physical activity, not like going to the gym, but like just being active in the world, teaching, traveling, uh, counseling, writing books endlessly throughout just decades and decades and decades of the same thing over and over and over again. And he taught himself, um, he taught himself so much. Like he taught himself uh, physiognomy, facial reading. He would just go into, he would go into New York City or Boston. I can't, I think it was Boston and just look at people for like, you know, weeks at a time and learn what their faces meant, what the different face, it all means something. And that's one of the things you learn about macrobiotics is that food is written on your face. Your face never lies. This is one of the books he wrote, Your Face Never Lies. Um, and he developed this, this incredible skill and taught it about facial diagnosis and how to see not only somebody's condition, but what they were eating um, because it shows up on your face. Like if you eat a lot of chicken, that'll show up. If you eat a lot of pork, that'll show up. If you eat a lot of sugar or dairy or anything, it's going to show up on your face. You don't, I know a lot of people have hard, they're just like, no, it's not, it's a hundred percent true. I can do it myself. I, I, I know facial diagnosis uh, and I can look at people and see what they're eating way too much of. Um, proof positive. I can do that. Um, and I know plenty of other people can. So like, if you want to look like a pig, eat a lot of pork. I mean, it's pigs are ugly animals. So like, from that point of vantage point alone, you shouldn't eat pigs because if you want to be fat and greedy and ugly and look like a pig, uh, people who eat a lot of pork look like pigs. I mean, that's very literal. People, literal. People who eat a lot of chicken look like chickens and they act like chickens and they laugh like chickens and they squawk like chickens and they get big fat bellies like chicken, right? There's different, you know, people who uh, you gain the characteristics of the animals you eat of, or, or whatever you eat, right? But animal food, because it has a consciousness, it influences your consciousness much more, right? Um, so yeah, I, anyway, I prefer um, cow over pigs or chickens. I'll tell you why, because pigs have no discrimination. They'll eat anything. They're endlessly greedy. If you eat a, a pig, not only do you be, get, get big and fat, but you become greedy and you have no discrimination. You just want everything, right? And you become very clever in a materialistic way. Uh, chickens, we're not, chickens fly, Chickens are birds and they have hollow bones. So chicken is very destructive for our bone structure. A lot of people will think this is total nonsense. It's actually very, very advanced uh, Aquarian kind of logic. Um, uh, but beef has solid bones and beef are discriminating. They don't, you know, they, they choose grass over, um, you know, uh, uh, eating animals right they, but the point is that they have a discrimination they're choosing and that's very important right hermes wants us to discriminate mercury wants us to discriminate right so uh that's important but i don't eat much meat but if i do eat some meat that's the meat i go for and fish of course is probably the main one uh fish have you know solid bones and they don't have much consciousness so they're not going to take over your mind the way that more evolved mammals and animals will all right. In any case, um, Ascendant in Sagittarius. You know, that seems relevant. Um, no need to elaborate there. Um, south node Mercury or Mercury south node Capricorn. That seems very relevant as well, being that he was a genius. He was brilliant. Really extremely, exceptionally high IQ. Just go read some of his books. Like, like extremely out there. Extremely brilliant. I'm not kidding. Um draconic sun in aquarius not surprising at all 11th house he he wanted to he dedicated his life to world peace which is a social issue which is very much 11th house and aquarian also as well right so genius uh inventor you know um developing his own kind of cosmology and and um practices and things like that he developed everything like so much um, huge, huge, huge figure. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, go check him out. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, Michio Kushi. Certainly a nice find. And I, I don't doubt that it was something like spiritual that pointed me to his chart because how else will I find it? I was just doing research and it showed up like when you type in Astro theme, you type in a name for celebrity search and other, as you're typing, other names will pop up. 
that's what I was doing. And Micho Kushi popped up. I was like, wow. I didn't even, uh, imagine that it would be on there. Interestingly enough, George is Sawa. I know we don't have a birth time, but he had Mercury conjunct Uranus. So also an inventor, you know, radical thinking, highly radical. Me, uh, George is Sawa was very aggressive. Micho, not so much, but both very um, Uranian, right? And I also have Uranus conjunct the ascendant, right? So um, my whole thing is that I'm, you know, basically not trying to rewrite astrology, but some of astrology will be rewritten by me, but it will be by any real astrologer. So anyway, that's just a tangent, but that's a Uranian kind of thing. You're, you're just doing your own, you're kind of rewriting the books or just not even rewriting. It's just writing new books. Um, the proverbial book, figurative, right? Trailblazers. Any case, uh, you guys get it. So that is Michio Kushi's uh, chart. So a real, a real gem, a real find. Um, super happy to to have found that and uh, do a reading on Michio Kushi, and um, yeah, um, just uh, once again, like ultimate respect and gratitude for the Kushis and Macrobotics, Georgia Sawa, uh, my father. All, all macrobiotic teachers and even though it needs a lot of updating and improve and improving and growth uh tremendous tremendous gems are to be found in macrobiotic teachings go look at it like you don't have to practice the diet but there's brilliant brilliant things in macrobiotics uh definitely so that's it for now guys um i'll be back again soon with another video hit that like button Subscribe if you haven't already. Book a reading with me. Um, macro goal machine at yahoo.com. Just you can email me directly or check out my website. Got some new testimonials up there. And that is macroastrology.com. Um, and yeah, that's it. Mediocre astrologer signing off. Man, he's okay. All right. Bye.